Hello everyone, welcome back to our Rhino tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to build this model inside of Rhino, but instead of talking about how to build the structure itself inside of Grasshopper, we're going to cover about how to build those templates that I used to build those web members inside of Rhino. So as you know that Grasshopper provides a digital model in a very decent way, but that doesn't mean that we can easily build this in the real world. And for me, when I made this model, the blue foam that you are seeing right now was made by CNC. And then I used the grids that I embedded in the CNC file as a reference to build those top chores that you have seen that closely attached to the foam itself. And then the thing that I'm making right now are the web members, right? There are thousands of them for my model and it was very tedious to build those. And because we don't have templates in the CNC model for those web members, I made those templates for myself. So today we're going to talk about how to build those templates for the diagonal webs or the diagonal members, right? Top short, bottom short, and the web members that are the three main components for any space frame model in the world. Okay. And uh, actually the building process for this is very complicated. It's very hard to cover everything in about like 20 minutes or 30 minutes tutorial. And I spent more than 40 minutes to build this by myself uh, for the purpose of like layouts and everything. So I would rather to explain to you how to use this file. As always, I will share this file with you uh, under the description section. So don't worry about it. You don't really have to know everything about it before you can use it. We covered pretty much everything here. Last time we talked about how to build this model inside of Grasshopper, like this very beautiful, uh, roof structure. And then this time we're going to show you how to use the file that I generated for your own design. Okay. And then I can guarantee you that this templates and everything doesn't just limit it on this project itself. For example, if I switch this to a roof member, I just made here uh, again, it is a double curved surface. This one right here, I can just drag it here and we can just use this template also, right? So that should be very helpful. Okay, let's go back and focus on our original design. And uh, first I will introduce you how to use this template. Uh, and then as you know that space frame have densities on both sides, U direction and V direction. We can change the density on this direction by coming to here and change the V count, right? I can change it to like, a hundred super dense on this way. And also I can make it has lower density, right? Like even 46, 43, 19, or let's just go back to 60. That's pretty clear. And also we can change the density on this direction, like right on the like, diagonal direction. I don't know how to say it. Come over here, we can change the density from 10, we can make it like 20. So you can see that there are so many more web members in between and same as a top chores and bottom chores. And you can see that right here in this template, we have more like columns or, or more rows, sorry, right from zero to 21, right? And uh, so on and so forth. And this blue thing that you are seeing right now is actually can be changed here. It shows a column index. I just call this column, like one column, two column, three column, four column, so on and so forth. And we can change this by simply coming over here and change the column index, right? This is the first column on the model. And then like all the way to the last column, which is column 59. And this also has been marked inside of this uh, template that I generated. And then I'm making this kind of like diagram for you over here, just for you to reference your own project. Okay, again, I firstly made this model in the real world I'm talking about uh, by using CNC. I was just making this foam. And then I used the models on this CNC model and I left some track or traces on there. And I use those traces, set up my top chord. And then I created those templates for my like diagonal webs or my center chores. I just usually call it by myself or just center members, right? 
I'm using these templates to cut them. And then I glue that on the top shorts. And then I, based on the like directions in between the web members, I connect them together and I made the bottom shorts. Okay, so again, this is top and bottom, right? Those uh, web members right here. Yes, I'm selecting, highlighting them right now in red, uh, green. And then the red part are the web members. Okay, so we are gonna focus on how to use these web members. We talked about the column here. It just help you to reference, uh, to have a reference which column it is right now on your templates. And also this A, B, C, D, right? So imagine you are flipping this model, looking at this model from the bottom with you, and uh, this will be the first, second, third. So this will be index zero, index like one, index two, index three, so on and so forth. And uh, this is right here, tell you which member it is, A, B, C, D, right? So A, B, C, D on this way. Yes, yeah, same as here, we can go to the bottom. And for example, the first like example, we have this diagonal here. And then we have four members from this surface, A, B, C, D, all right, forgive me, right here. So this template is helping you to identify each member of them and help you cut them, okay? So again, I will just to verify what I'm saying, like to verify the accuracy of this template, I will just do a random like, uh, pull up. So we'll uh, find a random number, let's say column index like 27. Okay, 27 is over here. And as I mentioned, I move it to the bottom, right? And then I will just bake this sets of um, web members. I will come over here to those members here specifically. I will just bake them, right? And then I'll go to the top view. I will bring it out and I will rotate it right for 180 degree. So now I can see it from the bottom. So I will go to the top view and then I'll bring it here. And because of this shape for my specific model, you can see that the number one is always bigger than the number whatever, 21, so on and so forth. So I just use this for my own uh, experiment. So right here, we have seen that. So this is A, B, C, D, right? And then this is the first seal. This is the second. I will change the display mode to shade it. All right, this is first, second, so on and so forth. So right now, let's just say on column 27, uh, the fifth units, which is right here. And then we will just pick up C, right? So this is 27 and then fifth so zero one two three four five okay and then we are talking about the c right and let's take the c out based on this reference a b c d c is this member right here okay we take it out and then we will also bake this one okay let me find the curve, it's over here. I'll bake it, now I got it. And then I'll bring this here, come over here. Right now it looks like different length, but that's because this is a 3D view, like, right? This is in 3D and let's measure them, see if they have the same length or not, okay? So I'll type in tape, paper, from here to here. Right here, right here, you can see that it says 1.071 inches, okay? And then this one also, I will just taper, hit it. One, right here, check it, 1.071, okay? So this template is definitely work. So everything aligns very, very well. That is the meaning of using these templates. Again, you can take this specific page and uh, you can use this kind of two-dimensional uh, like ID system 
right? They have their specific identification. For example, this member is column 27, uh, like raw 11, and then the member B, so on and so forth. So you can use this to guide yourself for this modeling process. Okay, and also I provided a lot of different setup for you. So you can change the layout of this whole thing. Or you can change where it starts, where it began, so on and so forth. You can change the paper size. Right now I'm using 8.5 to 11. You can change the factor of how tight they are gonna be inside of your paper. And uh, also you can change the distance between this and also this reference member. And again, there are so many other things you can change by yourself inside of this thing. Pretty much everything here are highly parametric. So you can definitely play with it by yourself. Again, I will make it back to what I did earlier. I think I put like eight counts on the uh, U direction. And then this is what it was look like. The last thing I want to mention about this project is about how to print out those templates. Okay. So I didn't find any very handy tool inside of Grasshopper that can help you to set up all your printing file process. Uh, so I just will use the easiest way, which is taking a bunch of screenshots by using those number sliders. And uh, what I will do is right now I have everything set up. I will go to the print, which is the top view. And then I'll go change my background to like this empty color. Also, I will hit this print, like saved view, which is make sure that the left and right all to the corner of this uh, viewport. Okay, and now I'll come over here, hit animate. You see, this is where you're gonna set up those files. You're gonna save them there. And also here are the templates or for your name files and also for your format of your file. And then here is a viewport setup. I will set up to the print. I drag this around and make sure that I have the accurate one that will cover this whole printing page. Right here, it says resolution 850 to 1100, which is exactly as I set up earlier for this 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. And then frame count, because I have 60 columns, so I will just do 60. Okay, so everything's great. And once I hit, okay, I'll come over here and you can see that those files are generating very fastly. So, Right now you can see that those files are all different, column 17, 18, 19, 20, right? Again, it's actually very fast. So yeah, that's all I'm gonna cover today. And uh, thank you so much for your time and please enjoy playing with this file.